Today I will be making sodium azide. My primary starting ingredient is hydrazine sulfate. In addition to that, I will be using 95% ethanol, which I got in the form of Everclear, and sodium hydroxide as my final starting ingredient. Other alcohols can be used, such as isopropanol, but I heard that ethanol gives the best yield. Starting off, I measure out 15 grams of hydrazine sulfate, which I bought on Amazon. I probably should have dried this, but I'll mention that later. I left the hydrazine sulfate in the same beaker that I measured it in and moved it over to my fume hood while I measured out 25 milliliters of ethanol and poured that into the hydrazine sulfate. Here is probably a good time to mention that anything from this point on is extremely toxic and you probably want to wear a respirator and you should definitely have gloves on and have a fume hood running. Hydrazine fumes probably will be generated so I covered the beaker with plastic wrap to limit exposure to water and to limit my exposure to hydrazine even though my fume hood probably carried it all away if any was present. The next part in this reaction will probably be very exothermic, so it is a good idea to add an ice bath or a cold water bath to your reaction beaker because whenever adding sodium hydroxide into the ethanol it will produce some heat and may release some hydrazine fumes. Here I measured out 4.6 grams of sodium hydroxide and you can notice that I spilled a little on my table, probably a good idea to clean that up if you don't want your table rusting. The sodium hydroxide is then added to the solution of ethanol and hydrazine sulfate. I added mine pretty slowly over the next 4 or 5 minutes in about 3 different parts just to limit any heat. Once the sodium hydroxide is being added to the hydrazine sulfate, it is freebasing it into the free form of hydrazine. This is what we want in our next step in the reaction for sodium azide, and the hydrazine will be dissolved in the ethanol, hopefully. Once all of the sodium hydroxide has been added, you want to let the mixture stir for about 20 to 25 minutes to let it all react. A nice trick I learned from Kim Player, a former YouTuber that was once removed, that is that you should add another 4.6 grams of sodium hydroxide into the hydrazine solution because most of the solid leftover is sodium bisulfate and it will make the ethanol layer easier to separate if we convert the sodium bisulfate into sodium sulfate. Once all of the sodium hydroxide has been added, it is allowed to stir for another 10 minutes. Let the particulates settle to the bottom of the beaker and then pour off the alcohol solution into, I used another flask but any way to store it in a dry airtight container. And then you can also use another 20 milliliters of alcohol just to make sure that you dissolved all the hydrazine left over 
and put that into the rest of the alcohol solution. Next step will be forming the sodium azide. Set up an uh, apparatus that looks something like you see in the video, and I added the alcohol solution into the three neck flask along with a condenser and then a dropping funnel that will have isopropyl nitrite in it. It will have about 14 milliliters of isopropyl nitrite, and then I added another 4.6 grams of sodium hydroxide into the alcohol solution with hydrazine. What you want to do here is dissolve all the sodium hydroxide into the alcohol. It is much easier to do if you use potassium hydroxide, which will make potassium azide. But here I wanted to make sodium azide, so I used sodium hydroxide. I may use potassium hydroxide later in a later video to make potassium azide. But make sure that the stopcock is closed for the isopropyl nitrite and it will generate some heat when the sodium hydroxide is dissolving so make sure your condenser has cold water running through it once all of the sodium hydroxide has dissolved you can start adding the isopropyl nitrite do this very slowly very small drips and it should take around 30 minutes you want to do this while it is stirring and no heat is added at this time because heat will be evolved through the reaction Around this time, you should see a particulate starting to form. This is sodium azide, and it will continue to form until the isopropyl nitrite has been completely added and even after we start to reflux. This is the point where we want to reflux. Here it seemed that all my heaters would not fit with the apparatus into my fume hood and my cheap crappy heater was broke. So I had no other option but to use a hairdryer which actually surprisingly worked very well and it did boil the alcohol solution. So I'm impressed. I did a risky move here by removing the addition funnel and putting in a stopper this was actually fine because i didn't see any hydrazine vapors in the flask or in the whole apparatus once the sodium azide solution has reflux for about 20 minutes i let it cool and disassembled it after it has cooled i put the sodium azide solution into the freezer so that i could get all the sodium azide that i could out of it and then I later stirred it around so that it would come out into my filter. This did not work very well. It somehow stuck into my flask, but that's fine because I'm just gonna dissolve it into water and use that to make other azide salts.
The sodium azide should be in your filter by now and make sure that you wash it with alcohol. Here I'm using isopropanol because I don't want to use all, all of my ethanol. It's probably a good idea to say that sodium azide is very poisonous comparable to cyanides so make sure you don't get any ingested or on your skin because it will severely harm you if not kill you. Here I was testing the flammability of it. It is still quite wet so I didn't expect it to instantly ignite like you would expect from sodium azide but you can see that it did ignite and that tells me we got sodium azide. 